Number 41. Two muscles in the back of the leg pull upward on the Achilles tendon, as shown in figure 4.39. These muscles are called the medial and lateral heads of the gastrocnemius muscle, which, by the way, lies superficially to the soleus muscle and is biarticular, whereas the soleus muscle is uniarticular. But if you want to learn more about that, check out our question series on the Anatomy and Physiology OpenStax textbook. Anyway, find the magnitude and direction of the total force on the Achilles tendon. So what type of movement could be caused? So here I have drawn out a free body diagram that details exactly what's going on here in the picture on the upper right. Okay, we got two forces. Each medial and lateral head is pulling with 200 newtons worth of force at an angle 20 degrees relative to the y-axis. All right, so that's the picture right here. So what we need to do is find the magnitude and direction of the total force, a.k.a. the resultant. So guess what we have to do? Just find the components of each of these two vectors and add them together and find the resultant. All right, so component table. Let's look at that. So component table X, Y. All right, I'll, I'll call this one uh, force one. Let's just say that's force one. And then this one's force two, okay? And when I add those two components together, I'll get my net force or the resultant force, all right? So let's draw, um, and if you notice this symmetry here, so that might help us in terms of we probably won't have to do too many calculations. So here, I'll do one of them, okay? Um, so here's going to be the, um, the force in the x direction of number one, all right? And then uh, this will represent the y component of one. Okay, now remember that the x here is going to be negative and the y is still positive. All right, so now I drew the triangle here, so I don't have an angle inside of that triangle. I do, I could call this 20 up there, but let me just work off of the x-axis. So remember it's a, it forms a 90 degree angle. If I know that this is 20, then the remainder has to be 70, right? So this is a 70 degree angle in there. So uh, let me look to find x uh, first. I'm going to use uh, cosine because I know the hypotenuse. I know this angle. I'm looking for the side adjacent to that angle. So cosine of theta will be equal to the uh, adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So cosine of 70 will equal uh, negative F1 in the x direction uh, multiplied by 200. So negative F1 in the x direction will be equal to simply do cosine of 70 times 200 and we get a value of 68.4, right? 68.4. Simply then just move the negative on over to the other side. I'll just er erase that over here. One second. There we go. And we'll put the negative there. Okay. So write that into your table. So this is a uh, negative, negative 68.4. Great. Let's solve for the y now. Okay. So the y component here, we know the hypotenuse. We know this angle. We're looking for the side opposite of that angle. So that sounds to me like sine. So sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. The sine of 70 will then be equal to the uh, force of the first vector in the y direction divided by 200, right? So simply do your cross multiplication here to find that component. So sine of 70 uh, times 200, great. And we get 188 considering sig figs, 188. Let me draw that a little neater, 188. And that's in terms of Newtons, right? These are all the Newtons. Okay, great, plug that into your table, and it's positive, right? 188, great. Now let's draw the vectors for number two, for a vector for a force vector number two. It would be an x pointing in that direction, and this is, would be f2x, right? And then a y pointing up, okay, easy peasy. So this is f2, now y. Now just, we're not gonna calculate it because remember this angle would still be 70, all the values, this is still 200, so they're all gonna be the same. But the x now is in opposite direction, right? So that would be a plus now, 68.4. And then the y is still pointing in the same direction of two as it was in one, so therefore that would be a positive 188, okay? Add these together now, that becomes a zero, which definitely makes sense. And then we just have to take this now and add uh, these two together. So what do we get there? 188 times two and 376, great. So 300 and 376, that's Newtons. So this, these are the components of my uh, resultant vector. So let's draw it. There's no X component and it's pure Y. And what way is it pointing? It's pointing directly up. And that should kind of make sense, right? Based on the, yeah, let me center it a little better. 
based on the picture, right? Two equal forces pulling at equal angles, right? There's symmetry. So that should make uh, sense. So here, this is the net force pulling up. It's a positive 376 newtons. That would be the answer to that question. And the direction it pulls up, so this would be up or north or whatever you want to call it, uh, that's fine, right? And then, um, so basically now all we have to think about, it says what type of movement, so the last part, let me get to the highlighter. Okay, so it says what type of movement could be caused by this force? So I mean, in terms of anatomical movement, it causes plantar flexion, all right? What does that mean? It means you go on your tippy toes, right? So it's the same motion as if you were trying to reach something in a, in a, you know, trying to reach a cup at the top of your cupboard. You couldn't reach it. What are you going to do? You're going to go on your tippy toes. That's called plantar flexion. All right. So that's what uh, the gastrocnemius and the soleus do uh, on the Achilles heel. It kind of pulls it up. All right. In any case, uh, thank you guys so very much. Um, I, did I say Achilles heel? I meant Achilles tendon. It's the calcaneus. That's the heel. Anyway, uh, thank you guys so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Um, I look forward to helping you in the next problems. And please remember to subscribe. That would actually mean the world to me. Uh, thank you.